Okay, so what do we need to make some beautiful Suffolk puffs? Suffolk puffs or yo-yos. Uh, I prefer the term yo-yos because it's such a fun word to say. Yo-yo. Okay, so we're going to need um, needles. I use the uh, Tulip uh, size 10 milliners needle. I think it's, I prefer it over the size 11, which I usually use just because it gives a little bit more strength to what we need. Um, I use a, a 28 weight Aurifil thread and I love using a dark gray. Um, it kind of disappears into the folds of the yo-yo. Of course, we have a yo-yo template, which is available from us. A pencil. I like to use the So Line pencil. And I'm actually really enjoying this one. It's the three color one. There's a white and you just turn the top to the white, pink or black. Um, and so you can choose which color to use depending on what fabric you have and what will show up best on your fabric. Um, scissors. We have the Car and K Buckley scissors, one for snipping threads and one for cutting the fabric. I love the Car and K Buckley scissors because the fabric doesn't swoosh away from the blade. These blades are slightly serrated so they catch the fabric beautifully and it means you can cut more than one layer at a time, which is also super handy. Okay, so let's get going. Um, I'm going to just get a needle. How cute is this container? Seriously. And these needles are lovely and it's a large eye needle so you are definitely going to need a, a need a needle with a large eye and you'll see why as we go through it I'm just going to pop it in there and of course I'm using my lap app which is um, super handy everything fits on there it gives a beautiful height it's easy on my back um, and everything is handy okay uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just thread my needle and once again when you thread a needle leave your thread attached to the spool and that way you know that you're threading the thread in the correct direction and another handy thing about the laptop is I just use it as a measuring tool also and I just measure across the top then I know that it's long enough there's a handy little magnet down here and I keep my um, needle on there and there's a little thread holder okay so what I'm going to do first is uh, find the fabric that I would like now when choosing fabrics for Suffolk puffs or yo-yos sometimes if there are too many colors in the fabric your yo-yo can end up looking a little bit muddy um, and you lose a lot so I like to choose fabrics that have a lot of one color in to get the best results Okay, so that beautiful fabric, which is one of our bespoke fabrics, I'm just going to flip it upside down, get my yo-yo template, and scoop this over so I can go right to the edge. And then I'm just going to use my pencil, draw all the way around. And, and the wonderful thing with yo-yos is, you know what, doesn't, the circle doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect because, or cut perfectly, perfectly, because once it's all gathered up, it's actually not going to make that much difference. Okay. And then I'm going to take this. But before I show you, there's like a quick and easy, if you want to cut out a few of these at a time, see how I've drawn one over there, you can actually go and fold your fabric like I concertina it up and just see how many I can fit on so you can take the time and kind of fold your fabric so you can have a few at a time but today I'm just going to cut one so I just pick it up and cut on the line As I said, it doesn't have to be too perfect. It can be a really quick cut. And look how fantastically these scissors cut. Really just grips the fabric as you go. And of course, if you're doing this at home, you can just use a glass or saucer or 
you know any round object to to do this template but this one is um, makes the perfect size for me and I like to I actually like to use a template for these because you know you can go back and know exactly um, what size you used for what you know anytime I've used a glass or a saucer I always go back and I go ah oh, which saucer was that which glass was that this way I'm very clear on which one I've used for what okay so I've threaded my needle and what I'm going to do is a little um, tailor's knot at the end so how you do that is you find the end of your thread and your needle and you just place your thread so where the eye of the needle is and you see how it's made a little round lasso and then you just wrap it around one two three four and uh, remember to hold the eye of your needle so that the thread doesn't slide out and you just pull your thread hold your fingers over that little knot and the little knot appears under your fingers Ta -da! okay so to make your yo-yo what I do is I start so that the wrong side of the fabric is facing up and I'm just going to fold a little edge over as I go along and literally with Liberty fabric we only need the tiniest of fold over and I'm going to stitch close to the closer to the folded edge than to the raw edge so how do I start I start from the wrong side so the correct side of the fabric but from behind um, there okay come up and we're going to tack all the way around the edge, folding as we go along. Now the size of the tack is approximately a quarter of an inch. And you can see how I'm going. And when I gather it onto my needle, I'm doing it closer to the folded edge than I am to the raw edge. And you try and keep the folded edge approximately the same amount folded all the way. Fold pop on your needle, fold, pop on your needle, fold, pop on your needle. So you can see I have gathered it onto my needle. Now I can just pull it through and then continue. About a quarter of an inch size. And this is a lovely thing to do. Um, you know, it's a lot like doing hexes. You can carry carry it around with you anywhere you go. You can sit in front of the telly. Uh, you know, I always take um, take it with me when I go to a barbecue or something. Um, and you can sit and do this while you're chatting to people. And it's always a real conversation starter. People come over. What are you doing? Oh gosh, my nana used to do that. Okay, so you're gonna come finish and come out on the same side as you um, went in so that your thread, the ends of your thread, both end up on the outside of the yo-yo on the correct side of the fabric. Horrors of horrors, I'm going to unthread my needle. I'm going to pull my yo-yo tight and just tie a, like a, a double knot one and pull it tight this is why I use a 28 weight thread it's nice and strong and you can give it a good old tug um, and then a second one so I'm just gonna hold that gather in there with a knot okay so you've got your two threads on the outside now you're just gonna give it a little wiggle and then you go oh cute look at that it's so cute okay so now I've got my two threads I'm just going to snip snip them both off over there and now I'm going to thread both threads through the eye of the needle again there we go. that's why you need a large eye needle to do this through and can you see I can see exactly my thread is sitting between those two folds that's where the knot is so I'm just going to grab those two folds like encase the little knot in there pull it open so that I can see the inside and I'm just going to do a triple stitch almost encasing that little knot in the fold one two three give it a good old tug and then you can snip it off right there 
around, pop the little folds, and there you go. So you've got a nice, neat yo-yo, no stitches on the back. You can't see a thread anywhere. It's an even thing. So this is what I need to tell you about making yo-yos. I've used approximately a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around. If you use a tiny little stitch, what you'll end up with is a big hole in the middle. This way, uh, it is gathered tightly into the center. Um, and that's the way I like my yo-yos to look. And ta-da, there you go. And you can end up with lots of pretty yo-yos. Dee -dee -dee.